Mm. Part of the better life. Yeah, like that. Part yeah. of the better life is. Okay. Um, did you start it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's let's uh, look at multiplying and dividing. Here's what we were. Rational means fractional. Did he do it? Did he do a good job? <laughs> rational means fractional. And when we were talking about fractions, we said we made a list. There are things you got to remember. Reduce fractions. On the first page of these notes, we reduce. And then um, multiplying and dividing, you don't have to have a common denominator. You multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. To divide by a fraction, easiest pie. What's the rest? Flip the second fraction and then multiply. Okay? And then um, adding and subtracting requires you to get a common denominator. So let's go back and revisit multiplying first. We did, I think, the first couple of examples. We'll revisit this one in case we didn't. If you have 4x minus 24 over 20x, and you want to multiply it by 5 over x minus 6, we decided that the strategy is going to be, instead of just multiplying across the top, that would require you to have to distribute a lot. We want to see if we can work smart instead of working hard and reduce a bunch first so that we don't have so much to multiply. So that requires us to, to have factors. We can only cancel factors. So if we factor out a 4, that gives us x minus 6. Since I see a 4 on the top, I'm going to replace 20 with 4 times 5 times x. And then multiply it by 5 over, and x minus 6 I could think of as 1 times x minus 6. And then I'm multiplying all the way across the top, I have factors. Well, 4 over 4 is 1. 5 on top and 5 on bottom is 1. x minus 6 over x minus 6 is 1. What did we decide we, we end with here? The x is in the bottom. You're right. So we have to call this 1 over x. And then we need to write restrictions. And the restrictions are, if x is 0, this whole fraction is undefined. So x can't be 0. And also, x cannot be 6. Then we have the next example that we had is x squared minus 25. x squared minus 25 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. And we want to multiply it by x plus 2 over x. If we started, uh, just start multiplying, we have to think of this as a binomial times a binomial and distribute and then collect like terms. And that's, we want to see if we can make it easier than that. So if we factor first, this ought to yell at you. Different squares. Different squares. This is a good factoring review. What about this one? You gotta find something that multiplies to be negative three and then be negative ten and adds to be negative three. Good. And I can write this as one times x plus two. So I have factors on the top over x. So this one, I have x minus 5 on bottom, x minus 5 on top, x plus 2 on bottom, x plus 2 on top. That really just leaves me with, the only thing I have to multiply is x plus 5 times 1, or just x plus 5 over x. Would it be okay to cancel those x's? No. You're good. No, it's definitely not, because on the top we have terms. So that is as good as we can get, except we need to write restrictions. And so what restrictions do we have? And a lot of times people forget x can't be 0. But if x is 0, this whole fraction turns into 0 plus 2, 2 over 0, and it's undefined. So anytime you see an x by itself, <coughs> x can't be 0. And x cannot be 5, and x cannot be negative 2. The next one, I'm going to try to keep you from, from making the mistake that is a common mistake on, uh, on quizzes. Students always want to cancel x squared over x squared. Is that okay? No. Good, don't do it. The only way, if you just started multiplying straight across the top, then you would be multiplying a trinomial times a trinomial, which requires a whole lot of distributing and it's collecting like terms and it's kind of tedious. So instead of just multiplying first, our strategy is 
Let's see if we can reduce it first and make it easier to multiply. So here we go again. We're doing a lot of factoring. We've got to multiply to be 12 and add to be 7 plus 3 and plus 4. Got to multiply to be 6 and add to be 5 plus 3 and plus 2. Got to multiply to be 15 and add to be 8 plus 3 and plus 5. And then we got to multiply be 4 and add to be 5. Plus 4 and plus 1. I got x plus 3 over x plus 3. That's just 1. I got x plus 4 over x plus 4. And that's all that cancels, right? So here's where we end up. x plus 3 times x plus 5 over x plus 2 times x plus 1. I'll take that answer. The real problem told us to multiply, so if I multiplied, I would end up with x squared, 5x and 3x, that will give me plus 8x, plus 15, and in the denominator, x squared plus 3x, when I do 1x plus 2x, plus 2. I'd take either one of these answers, really. I guess this is the one where we actually multiply. Don't try to cancel here. Restrictions are... X cannot be negative 3, negative 4, and good. Work on the next one. What's different about it? It's division. There you go. So, since it's division, your first step has to be rewrite it as a multiplication of the reciprocal. first fraction stays as it was, and the second one turns into a multiplication of 12y to the 6 over 15x squared. Again, um, we're going to try to make it simpler before we multiply. Instead of just 5 times 12, it's 60x and 7y to the 6, and on the bottom, 210. Instead of all of that, first, reduce it. So, I'm going to rewrite this as 5 times, instead of 12, we factor 12, we know that's 2 times 6, and 2 <coughs> times 3. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor these and call it 5 times 2 times 2 times 3 instead of 12. And then I'll have x to the 7th and y to the 6th. And on the bottom, instead of 14, I'm going to call it 2 times 7. Instead of 15, I'm going to call it 3 times 5. And then I have an x squared and a y cubed, and I kind of lined up like terms because we know what to do with these. So I can cancel. I got 2 on bottom and 2 on top. 3 on bottom, 3 on top. 5 over 5. So what happens when I divide x to the 7th by x squared? No, you subtract. I got 2 over 7. I subtract. That will leave me with x to the 5th and y to the third. Give me one fraction, not three. So we can write it as 2x to the fifth y cubed all over seven. And that's as good as we can do. But there is a restriction. x cannot be zero, and y cannot be zero. The next one is also a division, but your first step is to rewrite it. So if we rewrite it as a multiplication of the reciprocal, then x squared plus 9x plus 14 is now on top, and then 15 minus 2x minus x squared is on bottom. So again, we got a factor, and these are trinomials, not perfect square trinomials. They're trial and error, but they're at least the easy kind where we have a 1 in the front. So multiply to be 15 and add to be negative 8. That's going to be good. And multiply to be negative 35 while adding to be 2. Positive 7, negative 5. Okay. 
On the top here, to multiply by 14 and add to be 9, it's going to have to be x plus 7 and x plus 2. Then let's work on the denominator for a minute. On this one, if we think about this, the first thing we want to do to try to factor it is put it in descending order. So negative x squared and negative 2x and positive 15. And remember, I told you all it's kind of tricky to factor something where the leading coefficient is negative. So anytime you see that, if you factor it, there is a greatest common factor of negative, negative 1. Take the negative 1 out first. Then you got x squared plus 2x minus 15. And then this will factor again. Negative 1 times something has to multiply to be negative 15 and add to be positive 2. So positive 5 and negative 3. So when we finally get that denominator factored, we've got a negative 1 times x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now simplify where we can. And we've got x minus 3 on top and x minus 3 on bottom. We've got x minus 5 on top, x minus 5 on bottom. x plus 7 over x plus 7. So we land with just x plus 2 on top and negative 1 times x plus 5 on the bottom. I'll take it if you write it like that. I would also take it if you told me it's x plus 2 and you go ahead and distribute and tell me negative x minus 5. Either of these is okay. Restrictions. x cannot be negative 7 or 5 or negative 5 or 3. Just lay it back there and don't get it. Sit on the chair. And if and, and if we're going to be technically really careful on that, we would say this this denominator was originally no sorry this was originally on the original fraction plus seven and plus two was really in the bottom. So what other zeros would you get from that? Yeah, there would be one more zero. I mean, one more restriction of negative two. I'm not going to be terribly picky on that, but. You're welcome. But yes, you're right. Because that would have made the original fraction undefined before we flipped it. Okay, so the last one, work on it. It's a division problem. And the factoring is a little trickier. Just a little more time consuming. We've done it. So the first step on this one is rewrite it. It's a division problem, you got to rewrite it. And when we're working with these fractions, we're going to do a lot of writing, so just get your, get your hand in shape. And you rewrite it as a multiplication. 2x squared plus 15x plus 28 goes on top. We'll do one of these as a review, and then I'm just going to tell you what the others are. If we want to factor this, it's a trial and error. It's the harder kind of trial and error. So 6 times negative 14 gives us negative 84, and we've got to find something that multiplies to be negative 84 while adding to be negative 17. Has anybody found it? Negative 21. Yeah, we're good. Negative 21 times 4 will do it. Negative 21 plus 4 adds to be negative 17. So now, remember the process. Split three terms into four terms. Split the middle. So that'll mean I have 6x squared minus 21x plus 4x minus 14 and then group. And if I group those two, 
there's a common factor of yeah, three three x is common and then that leaves two x minus seven. And if I group these two, I can take out a two. That also gives me two x minus seven. So it factors as two x minus seven is common. Two x minus seven times three x plus two. So if you have to do that on all of these, it's a little bit time consuming, but you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, when you do the same thing on this one, we've already done this quite a bit, so I'll tell you, you should get 3x plus 2 times x plus 4. Check it, see if you believe me. That gives 3x squared, got it. 12x <coughs> and 2x, 14x, we got the right thing in the middle. Last times last, I got A. Okay? The denominator ought to be really fast. What are you going to get on this one? The difference of two perfect squares. Mm -hmm. And this one, I will go ahead and tell you, when you go through the steps to factor it, you should get 2x plus 7 times x plus 4. We'll check it right quick. First times first, I get 2x squared, yes. Then outside, I get 8x, and inside, I get 7x, and 8x plus 7x does give me 15 in the middle, 15x. Last times last gives me 28. So now, before we start multiplying all the way across the top, we want to see if we can make it any easier. And I gave you this one for a reason, because you've got 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 2. We've got x plus 4 over x plus 4. We've got 2x minus 7 over 2x minus 7 and 2x plus 7 over 2x plus 7, and everything went away, so what's the answer? 1. Good. This is, this is really 1 times 1, it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, and the answer is not 0, it's 1. Restrictions are, x cannot be negative 2 thirds, negative 4, negative 7 halves, and positive, positive 7 halves. Okay, so how do you feel about multiplying fractions? Straight across the top, straight across the bottom, but we want to simplify first. Okay, stop.